Good evening and welcome. Everybody can find a seat. I think we've got enough seats. Great crowd. Thank you all for coming tonight. Everybody get a seat here as the folks moved in. And there we go. If Bowling Green orientation, we'd say everybody scoot over so we have enough room. I think we're okay. Thank you very much. It's great to be with you. Uh, we thank you for coming tonight. My name is Van Wright. I work at Bowling Green. I live in Wapakoneta. Lived there for the last 36 years. Used to run Molten Gas a little propane company in Molten, Ohio, which is really the country. And sold that 10 years ago and was lucky enough to have my first job interview in 29 years and got hired at my alma mater. So here I am. So what I do is I recruit students globally, anywhere in the world, connect with them while they're at Bowling Green and help them with student success as they go. So that's my job. It's, it, I have a certain title, but that's, that's a long the title. We won't talk about that. But my favorite area is the area right here, where I live. So th this is my spot. Although I recruit students from all over the world, this is where I live, and this is where I love to work. So I'm in your high schools. Whatever high school is represented here, I'm there. I'm usually in there two or three times a year, working with principals, guidance teams, and of course, most importantly, students and families. So it's great to be on the Rhodes State campus. We want to thank Rhodes State. What a great partner they are for Bowling Green for many, many, many years. And nothing but a closer relationship each and every year here. This is a very, very important area for us, and, and Rhodes are just great, great partners. So we want to thank all the folks at Rhodes, especially Adrian back there, for uh, helping us tonight. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, for more than 50 years, WBGU has been a part of Northwest Ohio. Tonight you'll have the opportunity to hear from the university president and from our chief marketing and communications officer about the future of the station. Now we're here tonight to learn from you. We want to hear your comments and your questions, whatever you may have about that future. And just a little bit about tonight's program. After some opening comments, you will have the opportunity to, to make those comments or ask those questions. We'll have folks in the audience with microphones. Our, our microphones, I guess, are stationed, so we're in pretty good shape there. If you need some help getting a microphone to you, no problem. We'll be happy to, to do that. Uh, we ask when you make your comments that you give your name and the town you live in. That would be helpful as we're making some notes and so on. And so that we can hear from as many people as possible this evening, we'll limit each comment or question to two minutes uh, so that we can get everybody here. We have a big crowd, so we can get as many people heard as possible. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce the president of Bowling Green State University, Dr. Mary Ellen Maisie. Thank you, Van, and isn't Van just a, he is such an asset to Bowling Green State University, and he certainly knows this entire region very well. So my first thank you goes to President McCurdy. Thank you for offering this great facility here at Rhodes uh, State Community College, and we're so pleased to be on the campus, and of course, Dr. McCurdy is a Bowling Green State University graduate and is also one of our outstanding alums that we've just chosen and she was chosen for that this past year so we're so pleased to be here with you. Um, I'm joined here to this evening with a number of other individuals from Bowling Green State University and the first person I want to ask to stand and be recognized is Fran Ball, the former chair of the Board of Trustees at Bowling Green State University, and he has a nine-year member of BGSU and a longtime coach and a great and alum of Bowling Green State University. I'm also joined by Dave Kilmar, as uh, Van Wright just said, our Chief um, Communications and Marketing Officer. Uh, Lisa Matisse, who is Chief of Staff in the President's Office and has been very involved in, in the WBGU uh, input and was a uh, moderator of our forum at uh, Finley just uh, last week. And Alex Solis, one of our uh, staff members who is helping us here tonight. Um, as we look at this issue, what you must realize is that um, this came to us. And it came to us from the federal government. The Federal Communications uh, uh, Commission, and um, what it really, and, and Dave Kilmeyer is going to give you more detail, but it really says that all these mobile devices, they had left his right here, there's more spectrum needed in the airwaves out there for these mobile devices in the future. So the FCC is going to do, and they've been talking about for nearly three years, doing a reverse auction to acquire some of that spectrum what they call the uh, UHF spectrum, 
And, and, and there's a possibility then, in terms of looking at this op these options, if Bowling Green State University could have done nothing, they could go dark, or they could channel share, or they could go to another <clears throat> part of the spectrum, a VHF part of the spectrum. So we're looking at all these options. The Board of Trustees at their main meeting asked us to look at all the options. And we're here to just receive input this evening from all of you. We received input uh, from Finley last week, and we'll be in Bowling Green, our home community, uh, next week. And we'll have an opportunity. And we have been listening to our faculty, and we'll continue to listen to our faculty before we do any <coughs> recommendations or look at both, as I say, the pros and cons of all of these options. So at this time, in order to give you more detail about this, I want to introduce Dave Kilmar, but I also want to say that Bowling Green State University is very, very committed to the community, this community, and we're very, very committed to our students at Bowling Green State University. It's a great university. We're very proud of, of where we've been in this region for over 100 years. We're in the top 100 public universities in the country. We're proud of our academic programming, and we're extremely proud of our students and our alumni accomplishments, many of them in the room tonight. In fact, how many other alums do we have in this room tonight? I've mentioned several. So thank you all. Thank you for being here. Dave Kilmar, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Dr. Mazie. Uh, before I get started, there are a few people that I would like to uh, recognize or hear. Uh, I know Greg Phipps, I think I saw somewhere. Greg is uh, the president of our public advisory Working. committee. Thank you, Greg. Uh, also with us tonight, uh, next to Mr. Bull, is uh, Margaret Tucker. Uh, Margaret and her husband, uh, Dwayne, were, were uh, very involved in, and key in the founding and creation of the station, as Van indicated, uh, 50 plus years ago. Uh, in the back are our co-general managers, Tony Short, wave Tony, Tina Simon, or the co and next to Tina is Mr. Cummings, our uh, our chief engineer, who has been guiding me through the through the technical issues. Um, has the president indicated? I'm going to give you a brief overview of what is a, as you gathered from some of the the media attention, a very com a pretty complicated issue. So I'm going to try to make it as <laughs> simple and short as possible. And again, the point here is to hear from you and to, to take your questions. Uh, as the president indicated, this is all about uh, our the growing demand nationwide and our insatiable need for more airwaves to feed our, our mobile habits, our, our cell phone habits and the need for, for mobile data. Um, just a basic primer spectrum, it, at its simplest, it's just the airwaves, the airwaves that carry anything from radio signals, television signals, and of course mobile, mobile uh, wireless phone service and data service. So the Spectrum Incentive Auction is the tool that the FCC and Congress have come up with to uh, in give broadcasters incentives to give up their spectrum, their portion of the UHF spectrum, so again to make that, make that available for the mobile broadband providers. Uh, it's a two-part auction. In the first part, uh, the FCC will basically, uh, uh, in a reverse auction where the, the prices start high and go, the bids start high and go lower in each subsequent round, the FCC will buy up the spectrum from the TV, TV stations that was, wish to participate. In the next round, in the forward auction, the mobile providers then will buy uh, the spectrum from from the FCC. Uh, we are not permitted to sell directly to the wireless companies. It, it, the FCC is in, in control here. As the President said, and, it, and you'll hear us say several times tonight, you know, I can't stress enough that no decision has been made. Um, you know, we're here to hear from you tonight. So there are, there are four options available to us. Uh, the, the first is uh, we can choose not to participate. Um, <laughs> I learned I learned in Finley last week that I might need to pause. Pause there, so um, I'm glad I, I learned that last week. 
Um, it, it is important to understand that there still can be an impact on the station if we choose not to participate. As part of the auction process, as part in the post-auction world, after some stations have moved off the spectrum, the FCC is going to work to consolidate the remaining stations again to help make room. So that's that's a process called repacking. So basically, it's very likely that after the auction, if we choose not to participate, that we might be moved to another channel within the UHF spectrum. So. Uh, for those of you who receive us uh, via satellite or on cable, you probably won't notice the difference. For those of you who receive the um, signal over the air, you'll just have, you might have to, you'll have to find us on a new channel somewhere, but you know, we'll certainly, if that's the instance, we'll sort of certainly communicate that to us, to you. Uh, the next option then is for, uh, uh, for us, we could decide to participate and say FCC, you know, we're going to put our UHF spectrum in the auction, but we'd like to like you to find us a place on the VHF spectrum. Okay, and VHF is is anywhere from channel two to channel thirteen, and we can go uh, the higher part of the VHF spectrum or the lower part of the VHF spectrum. That's an instance too where um, there might be a cut, some technical challenges that our engineers are looking at. But an advantage that we have in Northwest Ohio, of course, is that we're very flat. So we're pretty confident that under any of those, either of those scenarios, we can make it work. And for you, the viewer, hopefully it should be fairly, we, we anticipate it being fairly seamless and hopefully you won't notice a difference. So that's, that's moving to VHF. The other option is for us to find a partner station and a channel share. Um, some of you may, may be aware that WBGU, we actually broadcast three channels. We have a high definition channel and two standard definition channels. So in this kind of an instance, we'd find a partner station and in a piece of the spectrum on that, that channel, we'd take half the signal and our partner would take half the signal and, and channel share. And again, should be fairly seamless for the viewer. You shouldn't notice much difference. And of course, the, um, the final option that that we talked about is the possibility of, of going dark season operations. Um, so now I'll just tell you what's, what's next in the process. Um, we have uh, two more public forums in Bowling Green, as the president indicated. We have one uh, a week from today and then another one September 2nd after our faculty and students have re returned to campus for fall, the fall semester. We're also completing our, our due diligence. Um, you know, the engineers are looking at the impact of, of the VHF option and, and channel sharing. Uh, we're also waiting for, fine, still waiting for final rules from the FCC on exactly how the auction would work and, and the different compensation levels and what, what they're thinking. So we still have that to, to, to go through. Um, we expect to receive, uh, in right now, according to the FCC, we'll be receiving the opening bids for the auction and our estimated value sometime in September. Uh, when we receive that, there's a 60-day clock that starts ticking. We have 60 days then to complete the application to the FCC where we tell them that, yes, we would like to participate or no, we don't want to, and if yes, how we would like to participate. So that's the next steps, and uh, I think the president indicated the board will be meeting in September, and we'll be walking them through through all the options again. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to Van, and we can get started with your, your questions and comments. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate that. I'm going to start my comments by giving my cars to these six potential falcons out here. <laughs> I can't be in a room with any potential dogs without leaving a car. So, I mean, you know, it might be a couple years, I'm going to help you out today right now. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate those comments from the president and our chief of marketing and communications officer. So, we need someone to start the process. These are two minutes, so whatever questions or comments you have, who would like to begin? Give your name and your hometown. We have a microphone, so who would like to begin? Okay, sir. Oh, well, yes. Okay, we'll have you next, sir. Thank you very much. My name is George Hayward, born in Lima, raised in Lima, graduated from Bluffton College and Western Michigan University, Kalamazoo. And I do have a few questions. Um, 
is this an example of, an, or another example, where money is more important than people? We see it quite often, especially in politics, and I do not expect to see it from universities, but it does happen. Uh, cell phones are more important than education, art, entertainment, and more. Uh, I guess if you're a teenager, that's very, very true. I would not think that'd be true of a um, university. If you close this uh, TV, sta TV station, uh, it will be remembered as a stain on uh, the history of Bowling Green State University, I believe, because once it's closed, it's always closed. And we do get a lot of value out of it right now. Uh, time will tell if this closure is going to affect your ability in your job of enticing people to come to your school as a student. Um, the Sesame Street was taken away from me as a child. Do I really want to come to your university? Do you really care about me and my entertainment, my education, and quality education from the station? Um, we've been telling you guys the same thing over and over and over in Finley in letters. I've written five letters. Um, and uh, our message is not going through. I hope somebody here will say something that will make you guys realize we need PBS in our lives. And without it, uh, Northwest Ohio is going to be different. Thank you very much. I'm Dr. Ken Collins, uh, three times a Falcon uh, from Ada Lyle, bachelor's, master's, and PhD in communication, radio, TV, film. Uh, by the way, Dr. Tucker was one of my professors. Uh, I would like to remind the university that WBGU is probably the most, the most important uh, marketing tool at its disposal right now. It follows pretty much, uh, I think, the comments that were just made. Uh, I think the public relations value and the overall marketing of the university, I mean, we see the figures, the university uh, contributes a relatively small percentage of the operation of Bowling Green, WBGU. And uh, I think, you know, don't forget the marketing value as well as the service. I have also here FCC maps showing coverage areas, service areas. And I spent some time looking at this, and of the alternative stations, if Bowling Green would shut down WBGU, we look at Toledo, WGTE, we look at WFA, WFWA, Fort Wayne, we look at WPTD, Dayton, WOSU, Columbus, and not one of those stations falls, well, for not one of those stations does the Lima area fall within their service contour. It's only WBGU. So a combination of uh, mission, of serving the public, and again, the marketing value of having that presence there, top of mind awareness for the university as a whole, I think is crucial. Thank you, Dr. Uh, good evening, and thank you, Dr. Macy and gentlemen, for having this forum tonight. My name is Kathleen Phipps, and I am from Lima. Um, I have had the distinct pleasure of working with students in the telecommunication program on the weekly program that is produced by WBGU called Scenic Stops. These are incredibly professional students and I am just so impressed with them all the time when we work on this program of the wonderful education and experience they are getting from the university but also with the staff at the station, the lighting, the editing, producing and writing of this program and they are a great group of kids getting a wonderful uh, education. I know this firsthand because last year one of these students in particular he graduated with a degree in one hand and an Emmy Award in the other because of his work on this show. Let me tell you that does not happen every day. I've been in this industry for about 30 years I don't have an Emmy yet. I want one. <laughs> but this young man graduated. Can you imagine what that looks like on his resume? And I know that that is probably key to your mission statement at the university to let your student graduate, students graduate with such a wonderful looking resume. So this young man has a great looking future because of the work that he did through WBGU. So I wanted to, uh, I think that this it is that statement there alone says what an asset the station is to the university. So I guess I would ask you, do you feel that having programs produced like Scenic Stops 
at the station, do you feel that that is an asset as well to our communities? And that's my question. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Mayor. Thank you, Mrs. Schultz. I have an answer to scenic stops. It's wonderful. I love it. I enjoy it. I, I just... <laughs> Myers. I'm from Carroll, Ohio. My only claim to fame was I was mayor there for several years, and if anyone's been a mayor of a small village, you know what fun it is. <laughs> the other thing I have going for me, I think, is common sense. I sit and I look at the rest of this programming that they call it, and call it, in my own mind, trash. And trash in and trash out is what you get. And the more I read in the news, the more I am assured that it's trash in and trash out. I love this station. I watch this station. I support the station as well as I can. I would hate to see it go down. I would hate to see it go black. I want to see it stay. And if somebody's offering you $40,000 for your time, 40, 40 million, I'm sorry, any of it, according to what the government spends, is a pittance. A spit in the ocean, and I don't want to see it happen. I want to see the station stay. Good evening. Thank you for uh, having this forum for us. Uh, my name is Steve Johnson. I live in Lima. I'm the publisher of the 419 uh, Weekly Magazine. It's a digital magazine.